So here I've got the front of the camera, shutter assembly and so forth. Now it appeared to me that this was sticking and this was preventing the camera from operating. It's probably worth testing this to see if this will work by itself. If it remains completely stuck, we'll know that the problem was definitely here. Otherwise it was probably a combination of things. So I've got a cocking that, that is in the cocked position. If I release it, run this backwards, it won't run. So there's a problem in the shutter, it's cocked, but it will not release. Yeah, you saw it kick there. It was a pretty weak effort. It's stuck. Those blades are stuck together, I believe. Let's see if it'll go now. What speed am I set to? Something fairly fast. Let's. That should be something like an eighth or a quarter. Should roll back. Capping plate should come up, allowing this to roll further. Now the shutter failed to re failed to release. It was a, fun, a, a faint sound. It's possible that even that the self timer is set and failing to move. But certainly it's, it's sticky, and, and that's where the problem lay. It wasn't elsewhere in the camera. So let's have this apart. Oh, it's not going to come off. Looking at these components, they're a bit dirty with dried grease, but that's hardly surprising. That screw's loose. That's not a good thing. Well, it's good for me disassembling it. It wouldn't have been a good thing for the camera. Sometimes this flash, this lever will lift out quite easily, other times it will not. If it doesn't, don't fight with it, just remove that bracket that's in the way. These screws are quite tight. Now, I would have expected there to be a shim washer there, and there is no shim washer. That's unusual, because it appeared to me that no one had ever serviced this shutter. And this side. Okay, this is a, an early example, it's a slightly different design. Interesting. Okay. Right, so that one doesn't have the washers. That's interesting. There are often changes made in models during production runs. Often they're fairly minor changes and they have more to do with ease of production than anything else, or cost of production, which amounts to much the same thing often enough. Let's get these screws out. And 
that mustn't lose that little spring. Now you might notice all these components are very clean. That probably means that this camera never saw a lot of use. It um, may, may have done virtually no work at all. I need to break this solder joint here, or solder joint if you're American, and then I'll be back. Alright, that's been desoldered. Let's pull that tab up out of the way. There's an insulating washer here, um, which may or may not come loose. Depends how well stuck it is. It doesn't want to, I'll leave it. The shutter should part from here now. It does. So we can pop our front housing aside for a second and look at the shutter. Right, we'll remove the shutter itself from the lens mount section. Oh, that screw's loose. That's unusual and not a good thing. Now I just moved the setting lever for the XM flash sync and uh, self timer selection and I heard some faint attempted buzzing which I presume came from the self timer but we shall see shortly so our lens mount here at the front we've got a little pinion here a ball bearing here on a spring that does the detent for our shutter speeds here we have the shutter itself and see if we can tell what's happening I'll just remove this. Take off the speed cam ring. I think that the self time is a problem but I'm not sure doesn't particularly look like it let's just remove some more stuff if I move this into the cocked position release it releases part of the way and then stops remove the self timer or delay action from here now that's certainly let's see what happens if I push that lever across that the self timer should have returned to the fire to the uh, neutral position the shutter runs it was here that it's really struggling it's very very sticky it only closed because I gave it some assistance so the shutter is very very sticky we'll have a look at the self timer see if that works at all I'll just set that No, self timer doesn't run at all. So the self timer is certainly one serious problem and that would be enough to stop the shutter from working. But the shutter itself appears to be really reluctant to do anything. That just doesn't complete its action at all. I'll remove the uh, retard gear train
the shutter's cocked. Let's see if it will work fire now. It does. So, our retard gear train and our self timer both appear to be problems. Not necessarily the whole problem, but certainly contributing to it. So out of interest, I'm going to clean these, pop them back in that shutter without any further disassembly, and see if I can make the thing run. So, here I have my retard gear train and uh, self-timer back in the camera. I'll set the self-timer first. Let's see what happens when we release the shutter. That's re released. It's waiting for the self-timer. If we set, run the self-timer, the self-timer is running down now. You can hear that. And the shutter released. Let's try that again. Release the shutter. Hold back the self timer. Sluggish, isn't it? it sounds sluggish. And the shutter did fire. So it's by no means running correctly, but it is running now. So we can quite clearly say that the state of the retard gear train and the delay action or self timer were both bad. That they were both causing the shutter to fail to function correctly. Even though the shutter at the camera is in quite tidy order, otherwise it's probably worth noting that the green paint has been rubbed off that setting lever. I don't know why how that's happened. Right, so let's take the shutter to pieces. First I'm going to unhook the main drive spring for the shutter. I expect that that's quite tired. I bet it's been sitting for decades in the cocked position. It's possibly not as bad as I expected. Unhook that spring. Remove those levers. Remove the shutter release lever. I need to take that spring off. So normally I just put a screwdriver in the between the end of the lever and the case to stop the lever pulling backwards then I can just pull that spring slightly, lift it out of the hole, lift that lever off, lift off the pallet wheel. This screw here which holds down our B lever, I want that out. That forms a post so you have to have a screwdriver with a split end on it, like that. Here's our B lever, and the B lever spring, which is quite fine. 
I want that off that post. I'll put that aside with my other springs because it's easily lost. We have one other spring that I need to deal with. And that's here. I'm holding a screwdriver over the tip of that post so that the spring cannot get away. Because like the other spring, it's quite fine and keen to get away. I'm going to remove this plate from the back of the shutter. It's held on with three screws. And this holds the setting lever in place for the flash sync and X and M uh, and self timer setting. And this lever should come off. I'll see if I can find a prettier one that's got green paint still complete. We're down to the shutter body itself. Three screws hold the mechanism plate to the shutter case. These screws are all very tight. So there's our case. There's not much to the case on one of these shutters because there's no diaphragm in the shutter. That's just a plain plate at the back. One thing you should always do is check that these three screws that hold that plate in place are tight. If one of them's worked loose and backed out, it'll catch on the shutter blades and you end up with a shutter that will not function. So looking at this, well the blades aren't stuck together obviously. They're not um, stuck together with a film of oil as they so often are. They are quite dirty, a bit marked. Probably have to polish those with a bit of Brasso before I put everything back together. I'll remove this screw which holds the post, holds back the main drive spring. Now I can lift off that main drive cam. And I'm interested here in seeing how smoothly and easily this spring moves. This is the blade actuating ring. The piece that swings the blades backwards and forwards. And it's quite, it's very stiff. That would have been a major component to our problems. And basically it's probably just gummed up with dried grease. So if I remove those other two screws, I'll just tip those shutter blades off my universal all-purpose piece of wood. So the blades weren't causing us a problem directly. The problem was being caused by the blade actuating ring. And it, left, it can only be the grease that's on here. That it's dried out and gone sticky. You can see there's quite a bit of that grease there. So I imagine if I clean these components up, very likely there'll be no problem at all. Well I've just Cleaned and polished the blades, cleaned the mechanism plate, lubricated the mechanism plate with a little bit of graphite powder. And that action is smooth and anything but sticky. So I think that that was probably the key problem, the stickiness of the blade actuating ring. And to some extent, there would have been some, uh, some contribution from the state of the shutter blades. The shutter blades had light surface corrosion, um, which just meant there were, mark, there were marks of corrosion on them. And it polished away. It didn't polish through the, the black finish of the blades. 
but it certainly polished the marks away. Um, so this is looking very good to me now. And I'll just pop that in this holder. And this holder in this case is the leftover front from a now deceased Reflex S. It's a handy place to rebuild these shutters on. And I will just continue and I'll just put this shutter back together now. I don't expect to find anything else remarkable in that shutter. When I've got it all rebuilt back to the stage where it's in the front of the camera, then I'll show you how that operates. Well, the shutter appears to work nicely now it's been cleaned. Of course, I haven't got the uh, back in the front section yet, but we can set the self timer. Release the shutter. You hear the self timer runs down nicely. And you can see the shutter opens and closes smoothly. Nice snappy action. Absolutely no problem. So it just required cleaning. It needed to be stripped and cleaned. Nothing was broken. So here I've got a Voigtlander lens, a Kodak Retina S type lens, and this is the lens mount from a Kodak Retina Reflex S camera. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to modify this mount so that the camera will also accept a Voigtlander lens. So what's the problem? Well if we look at these two lenses together, Zoom you in a bit here, I think. Get these lenses side by side. So here we have the locking notch. And you'll see that this cutout here matches. And this cutout here likewise matches. But at this point, the Kodak lens has a notch cut in it at this point to clear a part of the, the mount. And the Voigtlander camera lens does not. So, what are our choices? Well, we can modify the lens, the Voigtlander lens, to fit the body. Or it makes more sense, if the camera's apart, to modify the mount. If I modify this Kodak mount, so that it'll accept this Voigtlander lens, then it's fine. We don't need to modify any lenses. Any Voigtlander lens art that you might happen to get at a later date will just go straight onto the camera. So this is what we've got to do. Here's our lens mount. Now where's my red dot? There's my red dot. Now normally the, the lens would be fitted to the mount at this point. And we can see that it drops into the slot here and here. But on this tab, we're fouled by this projection. That projection, of course, would drop into here on the Kodak lens. So what I'm going to do is remove that projection. with a Dremel make sure I'm looking at the right thing yeah, so this piece here I'm just going to remove it completely this little piece here and at that stage the Voigtlander lens will be able to fit directly into this Kodak camera because there'll be no obstruction so that's my next track, is just to modify this mount. I'll come back once I've attacked this with the Dremel. Alright, well this is the tab here that I had to deal with. And I've rounded that, cut that out. I'm just going to take that sharp edge off the top surface there. And the bottom surface. Now the bottom surface is by no means as important. You can't get your fingers in there and cut them. 
and that should be our mount. Now will it fit? Let's have a look. Hopefully this will just drop straight on now, it does, and latch into place. So our Voigtlander lenses will mount neatly onto that camera. There's nothing loose and um, we haven't removed anything that would normally be a, a surface that the lens latches to. The bayonet, of course, couples here, here and here. So that's all that's required to modify the mount. And so now that mount would accept the Voigtlander lens. And of course it would be just as happy accepting the Kodak lens that we started off with. There's nothing loose. There's um, no contact with that point. There was no required contact. It was simply a key. A key to lock out the use of other lenses. And we've removed that key so now we're good so here we go that's all ready now to be assembled onto the shutter and uh, it means that this retina reflex s camera will be able to use Voigtlander lenses i have the shutter cleaned finished reassembled back in the front housing and i'm using the cam here to cock the shutter if we press the shutter release shutter closes, as the capping plate comes up, the action of the here con continues to unwind and that allows the shutter to fire. I'll just do that again. Just put a bit of pre-tension on that spring. That should do it. There you go. So that's working as it should. And that shutter is now ready to go back into the camera body. The front control rings and so forth, I only ever put those back on here once I have the camera assembled. Um, it makes it much easier. You'll spend a long time fighting with this otherwise. So what have I got left to do here before I put that on the camera? Well, normally I want those wires tucked down a little bit flatter than that. That's good. You've got to make sure that it doesn't foul the gear coming in at this point. That looks okay to me. I want to put some black paint over this connection here where it's soldered. I want some black paint to cover that joint. I see there's a bright spot there. I'm not sure where that's appeared from. That need a touch of black paint while I'm putting it around the place. And the buffers for the mirror. Now they're glued on. And there are these two felt pads. And they get glued on here and here. On later cameras, they had a strip of leather there instead. And that certainly worked well too. But these ones look... Uh, if I, if I can get them to lie straight, they'll be okay. They've got some quite thick glue on the back of them. They were stuck with something quite hard and crusty. Oh, perhaps I'll cut a leather one instead. 